everybody, my name is Dan and we are gonna be continuing with the tribute to Kara and this is episode 4. Um, we have been through the whole experience of them uh, evolving from a pretty shy group, uh, changing concepts, uh, getting new members, losing some members, to uh, you know a very established group with a, a huge fandom and international recognition. Uh, this is January 2013, uh, Kara is in their second tour to Japan, this is Karasia 2013 and uh, this is a concert that they did uh, the beginning of the year uh, as a new year, con a new year tour and um, yeah so like they sold the tickets for this concert like 45,000 people in five minutes so yes that's how big this group was at that time and uh, I wanted to share this song because this is one of the songs that actually is not a very famous song because um, um, soon things are gonna happen and this song was not really well uh, uh, distributed I guess but it was a fun song I do remember this song even though I haven't watched this show for such a long time but <laughs> I'm excited I hope that every single uh, Camilla there is enjoying uh, you know just going back to the nostalgia and watching all this together and uh, all the new generations and all the new groups uh, all the new fans of the third generation groups are just you know like having a blast in discovering these kids. Let's go, one and two and three. And this is tonight, second Japan tour, uh, Karase 2013. Let's go, wait, I'm gonna start it again, now. There you go. Dude, this was huge. And I remember they, I actually use this song from the reality show uh, kind of a, uh, Baby Kara, so kind of project. One way or the other one, they don't look they are 16 years old anymore, but they still keep like the cute side of being an adult, <laughs> I guess. But they're in their twenties, so. Ah, my goddess. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Nicole looks so gorgeous. Those dresses, though. One thing that I remember about this is like how playful they are. Wow. I believe that this song has been also covered a lot because it was one of the latest songs that they released. And this is also a B song, this is not even um, um, one of their uh, singles. I'm always so fascinated with how, with all this hand choreographies that all these people do. Ah, baby! Oh, that's so young. It's funny because after we lost uh, Song Hee that was on the first album, I think I got acuity and started taking over the the main, uh, you know, like the high notes and everything. And then when the group evolved, uh, So Young was the one that actually her voice got so much. Wow! Woohoo! So, um, 
So I was saying, it's like Sonyeon got, her voice got so trained that actually she started getting to all these high notes that she didn't do before. Um, so that was Karase 2013. And uh, I remember in this show, they actually released that they were gonna be uh, doing, um, you know, they had an, an actual anime, Japanese anime, uh, as they met characters, they were playing like different, um, super weird uh, <laughs> jobs. And I remember I watched this anime and I didn't understand a thing. But we're gonna get a little glimpse and I'm gonna make you suffer through all the process because it was a, it was okay. Like the song was outstanding. So that's what I was gonna show you guys. But not like the anime was like, mm, you know, I've seen better. <laughs> Let's go one or two and three. Just a little, just a little sneak peek. There was a little house music going on. So Park Yuri was supposed to be this like motorcycle fighter slash FBI agent. And that looks like Rio de Janeiro to me. <laughs> I think that, um, okay, I'm not going to show the whole thing, but I remember uh, Son Young was an astronaut and um, somebody else was the captain of the ship and a firefighter and each episode was one of these kids just like resolving some kind of a mystery of some kind. Yeah, so we're just going to jump because this was enough for what we needed to show about them. Let's go. And if you guys want to check this by yourselves, I probably I'm going to leave the, all these links da down below in the description. So if you feel like, you know, like I want to go and like rewatch everything by myself without this idiot talking all the time and explaining me all this stuff. Or uh, if you are new, you just like, you know, go enjoy. All right, so we're still in 2013 and um, uh, these girls are doing heavy, heavy promotions in Japan. I think that around 2013 and 14, uh, 12 and 13, they were like doing much more uh, work in Japan than actually in Korea. They would go to Korea, they would release a song, a single, and then they would just go back to Japan and continue their promotions because the Japanese market was giving them so much stuff. Um, in a good way, I guess. And then so they released uh, this new song after um, their animation that was called um, Bye Bye Happy Days. And we're gonna watch it together. Hopefully, um, everything is gonna be fine because it's in Japanese and like reactions to Japanese could be tricky. Bye Bye Happy Days was another uh, amazing uh, music video that was blocked uh, by YouTube because of uh, Japanese copyrights. So we're gonna be reacting to their uh, show performance. And uh, if you guys wanna check their MV, it's down in the description below with all the other uh, music videos and most interesting MVs that you wanna watch uh, about Kara if you feel like going through your own personal marathon with them. And we're gonna be reacting to, not reacting, because remember these are not reactions, I'm just like sharing with you my passion for this group and just like doing the whole revival with them. So one and two and three. And wait, 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 wait. There you go. Right now. When the concert starts. Yeah. All right. Remember, this is very Japanese. We're in 2013, I guess. Yeah. And I really recommend you guys to watch the music video because it's so cute. This is when... Oh, sexy Gohara. She can control herself. Ah. Cutie looking gorgeous. Wow. That's her hairstyle for the uh, Korea drama that she did. You remember, this is J pop.
At the same time, remember that we're competing with uh, AKB48 and all those Japanese groups, so what these girls had was a choreography. Because uh, at that time, Japanese uh, uh, groups were choreography very basic, but uh, more about like the charms of, Il of, of Il each uh, member. But these ones, they killed it. <laughs> Again, she always reminds me of the voice of Chorong, or how soft her voice is. And she speaks Japanese so good. That's why she became a freaking actress in Japan after Kara. And it's funny how uh, Nicole, that she was born in LA, that she got used to, because it's a, such a, a crazy cultural change. Because at that time, we were not used to any cute concept in Western countries, but we don't yet. You don't have groups that do cute concepts in the Western countries. Good sexy. <laughs> wow, so gorgeous. And her Japanese was also pretty, pretty good. <laughs> so good. Bye bye summer days. I remember the envy was about a dude that was leaving town and all of them wanted to give him like a goodbye present, a bye bye summer present. And they were all in love with him. Weirdly, because they were helping each other. But, you know, who am I to say anything? <laughs> wow! Hell yes! Arigatou gozaimashita! All right, so that was uh, that was uh, bye bye happy days, and uh, I don't remember that we we had to record this later because um, the MV was actually blocked, and now we're gonna be moving to the next one. I know that um, these are kind of like their last uh, um, MVs or songs that they are releasing together. Um, they become they became super huge in Japan, and they were just releasing one single after another in Japan, and. Um, I was still living in Brazil and I was just waiting for the new stuff. And a lot of these uh, Japanese songs, they were not released there because of copyright thingies and issues or whatever. And um, so, uh, yeah, so we're gonna go to the next one. Thank you, Summer Love. And this one is a tricky one because I think that not many people have seen that song. Not even uh, Camellias because of uh, uh, Japanese copyrights and uh, because of, I don't know why, it's like they are, they, this song is blocked everywhere. Uh, this song is, so I'm gonna make sure that we can see it even though if I need to change stuff uh, around. So where I got the, from this weird site, the actual final version, you're not gonna, never gonna find this in any other website. So let's go one and two and three, and this is actually the original full MV. One and two, and let's go. So that was another of those big songs uh, that they released in Japan, and um, that was a, that was a huge hit. I remember still when I listened. This is one of my favorite songs from them. Uh, this one and Go Go Summer, um, you know, and a few of that jumping. But 
um, definitely on my on my big list to watch. And uh, I know, as I was telling you, this song is you don't really find stuff about this song. So they remember they have different versions for different members. Each member had their own special MV and whatever. And if you find them, send me the link because I tried and that's not gonna happen. All right, so we're still in 2013, and um, we uh, just come from Japan with all those uh, single releases that they did there. And of course, they went back to Korea and they released their Korean uh, single that was uh, Damage lady no yes that's what that was damage lady and um, I remember they was like playing with this androgynous kind of concept and stuff so let's go together damage lady and um, I, I remember I love this song they, they have these, these beautiful like queen looks let's go one and two and three and you can see a lot of these MVs are not from this time but a lot of other Early, new groups have taken elements from all these envies for ah, girl. Super sexy. Song Young giving us the high note. Hell yes. Ah, no subtitles. Wow. This was, I remember, it was sexy and mature. Bah, gorgeous. One day I'm going to ask Nicole why she always had short hair. Wow. All right, they don't like the dudes. And they're supposed to be in the bathroom? Oh, there you go. Yeah, and now they are gonna dress up like men. Those weeks, though. <laughs> That drop with that like, -na 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 -na. so so amazing. All right, I would say that the MV was a ten before these wigs came in. <laughs> then it went to a seven. <laughs> also, they are coming now uh, with the men's attitude and they are pretty much like bullying all the men on the restaurant. And the girls are like, yeah, do whatever. <laughs> or maybe those dudes like it. Wow, <laughs> that's so cool. And that's how you start a party. Set the fire alarm. <laughs> wow, they look so royal. <laughs> of course. They are angry. You guys are angry girls. At this time, I don't know what happened with the men in this MB. They look like wimps. <laughs> but it was awesome because I guess like that was the whole idea, the whole like uh, women power, let me show you, I'm not just another of these girls that you can just give me your talk, 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 I actually have my own attitude too. But at the same point, they dress like men to actually put attitude on the table. What? <laughs> I, that was weird, but anyways, that was fun. Except for those weird wigs, those look like they, they had a cat on top of their heads. For some reason, those were... This is not negotiable. We shouldn't have seen that in the NB. But anyways, like that, I guess that was a concept. 
and uh, we're gonna be moving to the next one. All right, we're still in 2013, and uh, we are going to be reacting to Runaway. Runaway is a song that um, was the, I think that's the main theme of a series of, uh, if I remember well, five episodes. Uh, each episode was, it's kind of like a dra Korean drama. Each character had her own little sketch or a little love story. I remember I watched all of them. They are in YouTube, so you can watch. Maybe I just like put it on the, on the description and just, if you guys feel like watching it. So each member was the lead character from a story and this song was the lead song. So we're gonna have some sneak peek of uh, what it was. I do remember that at this time, I think that uh, DSP was trying to like, you know, they knew what was gonna happen with these girls. The girls had no clue what was gonna happen, but they were like squeezing the orange to get as much juice from these girls as possible before doing the unthinkable. If you feel like watching the, the episodes, like, just go, it's called Secret Love, and that was a series only by Kara. One, two, three. I remember it was pretty sad. She was some kind of an actress model. She was a dumb girl that falls in love with an angel. She had a deadly disease. You know, like all those like cliches from love stories from Korean dramas. I do remember it was shot, I think, in uh, Jeju Island, Japan. With a bunch of super handsome actors, of course. And the song was outstanding. Oh, there was some kind of like a time travel in those, in one of those too. They all end up well at the end, so don't worry. <laughs> My personal favorite, of course, was the one with uh, Park Yuri, but also the one with Gohara was super cute. But of course, all of them ended with a kiss, like the whole like Hollywood thingy and stuff. Um, it was one of the uh, really beautiful songs. Remember, it kind of has a beautiful, a lot of beautiful ballads. Most of them are on their B-sides. So um, I would definitely recommend if you guys feel like, that's one thing that I do uh, from time to time. That is, you know, I go to Spotify, I just look for Kata artists, and then I just let it go. Because like, it has all the songs from all the albums and just like, boom, you just get the whole thing. There are some, there's, from the 200 songs that they have, there's, five that are horrendous and <laughs> just pass them but most of them are outstanding so there you go i know i'm, I'm too cruel even though i was like amelia but you know what? we need to actually uh, uh be honest about the whole experience like all, all groups have amazing stuff but also not everything is, is amazing because there's a production behind it Anyway, so this ends our uh, five, first, uh, fourth episode from uh, uh, this tribute to Kara. And um, just remember, we have only one more, and obviously the last one is the one that is gonna tell the, the sad story of uh, how this group disbanded and what happened. And we're gonna be having a little bit of the information of what happened with each character after the, the band disbanded, but, uh, and some, like, a bunch of other little stuff, you know, that happened in, in between. But um, I remember being around this time, 2013, and you could smell on the air that something was going on with the group. And whoever was a camellia was on edge because we didn't know what was gonna happen. One thing that, that is, a, is a curiosity about this, the last one that we just watched, is like they released this song um, on, the, um, they released this song before uh, the, uh, a couple of the, the members left the group and then they released 
the drama when the group, when the, the, the two members were off. That was pretty tricky, a, kind of like a fishy move from uh, DSP, but DSP has never been a company that was too much into giving love and support to their, um, their artists and more about making money. So, anyways, I had to say, we're gonna be watching the next episode. Uh, soon and uh, yes, yeah, just uh, enjoy what you have seen it and just like uh, go to my my links and just like just rewatch it again. If you want, if you feel like. I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.